Greetings Metalheads and welcome to another edition of the Friday 13th YouTube channel. I hope you're well, I'm doing very good. So first of all I'd like to say thank you to everybody who subscribed, new and old. Please tell your friends to subscribe. There's some great interviews going to be online next year and in recent times there's going to be some in the next few days. So you're about to listen to now a interview that I did with Judas Priest back in 1996. This was in the recording studio for the album Jugulator. Me and uh, several other journalists from around the world were invited to meet the band in the studio. Uh, some of you may be asking how I got to meet Judas Priest that day. Well, I'm friends with Tim Owens, the Ripper, so it did help. Um, got invited by the management to meet the band, so we spent half a day with the band listening to songs from the forthcoming album, Jugulator at the time, and asking the band questions. You might hear me asking a few questions, as well as other people, so enjoy. Take it for what it is. Be safe, stay metal, enjoy your Christmas the best you can, and I'll maybe see you next year when I'm touring with bands. So take care, be safe, stay metal. Well, you just sit down and work together. We actually put an internet, we put yeah. an internet, put an internet question there saying, what internet. would you recommend? <laughs> and there wasn't one that was like compatible with the other. Well, no. I mean, some stuff, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't put a set list together out of it, you know. It, you you fed it all into a computer, you might stand a chance. In, the, the office was like when Jane came in the morning, there's like fucking sheets of it. You know, it's like everybody's got their own idea of what a preset should be. That's wonderful, you know. But you do find a lot of, um, you, you see a lot of exciters on there, you see a lot of painkillers on there. So, you know, you could, you can just, and we can do all that, you know, better than ever, believe you me. So it's great, you know, it's, if you picked up 200 and you found the same song, that could be the first track, you know. So there are a lot of common ones, but then there's obscure things in the can, like, you know, people go oh. right back to, to the Doyle. There's a the song album. on there that we never released, it was a demo, there's somebody who got <laughs> <laughs> wants us to play it live, you know. Oh, <laughs> and, 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 and this guy knows more priest tracks than we do, you know. He, he breaks into stuff, and we go, oh, I, I, yeah, we'll play that in a minute. <laughs> you have to go and remember it. But that's great as well, because he's pushing us, you know. It's all good news for us, we're excited, we're enthusiastic, we love what we've got, we just hope everybody else does. When did it all start? Probably around about January. You're at first? Yeah. We don't know yet. We've got the, this promoters, we're in touch with promoters now. Obviously we want to make a release date first, which is 31st of October, but if we do that, yeah, we should probably, we, we usually start for about six weeks before we start to release it. So everyone gets used to, they don't want to go here. Yeah. We've done that before, we've gone out on tour before the album release and tried to play the new album. And there's, you know, people don't know what they're listening to. They need to just absorb it. In all fairness to them. I mean, the question before about the metal thing. You see, we've been doing extensive interviews with people from all, you know, we went to Germany, obviously, there's people like Ben says that remain, do they come? And most of them, they got magazines. You do a magazine from the North, right? I mean, these, these are not, we, we get a bunch of them. This, was this Austria, did you say? Austrian. Austrian, I mean, you know, and it's, where's, you know, this sort of stuff, it's, it's, it's everywhere, isn't it, really, you know, I mean, it's like localised, it's sort of, you know, but it's, it's there, and this is here, and if it wasn't for these mag magazines, so, it's so important for, like, you know, for metal fans, and, um, because, no, I'll say, no television, no radio, mm -hmm. you've got these magazines, so important, there's a lot of metal fans out there, there's no two ways about it, and that's why I think that, I think we've, we've got it right to do exactly to, to do this, to go forward with the man there, he's a great fucking vocalist. There's far too, you know, too few of us really, that just want to go out there and fly the flag. He the care a lot more for the metal fanzines then. Do you really respect the fanzines that are still around? Ab absolutely. Yeah. So if a fanzine came up to you and say, yeah, I'll do an interview, you want to say no? No, no. Right. Because no. we feel that's the, right, the, the root there of the people who care about metal. Of the fanzines. You, know, you, get, you, you get other magazines that have turned to this and turned to that, but in actual fact, the fanzines are the people who I think really relate to the kids, the metal kids out there. It's Jeez. the same in the States, the college radio stations are almost the equivalent of fanzines. You know, you get requests there for metal tracks, you know, that 
they're classics in their own way. They're, they're timeless. They're not old-fashioned, you know. And then they support all the all the new bands as well. But um, I mean, don't, don't ever get us wrong. No, not we, we will never put down the younger bands. They inspire me a lot, a lot. I love the aggression, you know. I, I think it's fucking great. And so you know, you, you, you do it in your own way. I think the most important thing is to have a recognisable style. But you can still change. Right. Uh, and we've definitely got that and that's why this, this guy's just We've right. definitely been listening to a lot of like a, a shot in the arm, you know. I mean we're so prolific since we met him, we're excited. We can we can break into any pre song as long as we can remember the chords. He knows the flow of course, you know. <laughs> Doesn't take us long enough. I say what's it D minor Kent? No, gee, okay, right. You know, so we get and it's just great, you know, talk about a new lease of life and it's like Ram it down, I mean it's completely different to Painkiller, you wouldn't think it was the same band because it's so heavy. Yeah. And as soon as I heard the song Painkiller, I thought, that's not Rob Alfred, that's not Priest. Yeah. It's like shit. You know, they obviously listen to some really underground, smaller bands like you said. So what inspired you to go heavy? Was it bands like Machine Head and... Well, we, we've always been heavy, but to, to be honest, you know, I mean, I suppose everything we've, we've tried, always tried to push the horizon further from metal. That's what we've got to do. And we've, we've not always got it right. But I'd say 85% of what we've done has been right. 15% has been experimentation. And you know, sometimes when you're trying to trans, you're trying to transit from there to there, you have to do it in certain ways. You have to get stepping stones, and maybe those stepping stones haven't always quite been right. But I'd say 85% of what we've always done has been true metal. You know, yeah. Turbo after all these years now. Turbo's a great album. It was a turbo is in its own way. It was a bit of an experiment. You guys have heard us play turbo a lot on stage. It's the heaviest fucking song ever. Yeah, yeah, we used to open the set with uh, Ace and Nicole. That was fucking crunchy when we did that. It was yeah. down, down, down. You know, because it's a live version. I mean, Priest, what you hear on album, you always have to think, let's watch him play it mm-hmm. And it's totally different in its own way. It's, it's there, it's got impact, you know. So, um, but to be honest, I have to be honest, I think that the way me and Ken have done this album was just like the old days. When we've got no money, I used to go into Ken's house, right, and we'd sit there in front of the fire in the winter with a couple of guitars and a couple of cheap amps, and we'd knock out riff after riff, and we'd put them together, and we'd make them work. And that's just how we wrote this album. And it's been a, it's been a joy to do it, hasn't it, Ken? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then if you think of a little live passage, we've got yeah, that works. And it's we've built the song like that, and that's how we used to write the other until you get caught when you see your, your aim in your market in America, or you see changes in trends, you know. So even if you don't ad- admit it, you actually have gone a little into an area you're uncomfortable with. We'll never do that again. Never. We've got formula for this album that I think will last us till we hang the hats up you know. It's brutal, it's fierce, we enjoy it. We play any song in there and I don't ever get this feeling like is this really Judas Priest, you know. It's totally us and uh, I think what happened at turn of events, you know, going back to the leave is the best thing that could ever happen to us. It's given us new life. We've, we're totally all genuinely into the music now. We, you know, our heart and souls into the band, which we can't, we couldn't honestly have said before. And it's just give us determination to, to prove a point. And it's took us back to a style of writing which me and Ken feel totally comfortable with. You know, so uh, I, looking back now, we wouldn't change a thing. Uh, we're totally happy, and we'll move forward. I think, and you know, if we're successful, we're successful. I think. People are going to enjoy the album. Was it your choice to sign for STD and be a priority for this level than to sign for a major? Well, we no, we, no we, we left Sony two years ago amicably, but happily. Mm-hmm. And we formed our own record company, which is Freeze Music. <coughs> and we, we signed to CMC in the States, FPV in Europe. Uh, zero records in Japan, all in conjunction with Priest Music, because we found three companies that understand Priest totally, mm-hmm. respect the band, and know the music. And finally, and we now we have a certain amount of control, but we don't need it now because we're with people who understand us anyway. 
and work with the band, you know, like Sony used to, like, there's an extra piece of it, or sell a million worldwide. They couldn't care less. It could have sold three, you know. This is a band which sold over 15 million albums, and they still wouldn't know our first name. You know? <laughs> And they still think it's Judith Priest as well. You know, we used to get bouquets of flowers like a have a good gig Judith, you know, from the Australian <laughs> representative in Ohio probably or somewhere. Now we've got record companies, we with people who really understand the band and really understand the music. And that's very important for us, more so than and the same thing you said before about the fans, the you the, the people that really um, stick to the music. Uh, they are very fans, the people that really care about the, the heavy music. Yeah, that, that's the people whose albums I met. You know. It's our, it's our way of saying thanks for supporting us through Seven Dormers. <coughs> when you never knew we'd come back, but they always have, and they, they're still, you know, they're still there for us. So we, we say thank you. It's got to be <laughs> 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 Thank you, Bill. Thank you. And you've still got your own words, haven't you? Did you check contribute to the lyrics of the song right now? Oh, the whole writing process of it is a pretty difficult one. Yeah, it's, it's great because that's the first thing that we can talk about for us is the next album and writing. Having us three get together and do it, mm -hmm. that's great. I can't wait to do it. It's mm -hmm. going to be a great experience. Do you have some ideas extending it to this priest sound? Uh, say that again. Uh, do you have some uh, new ideas to bring to the Jewish priest sound? Uh, yeah, and actually, I think I did a lot of this. I mean, really. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, I'm as happy as I could possibly be. I have a small quote so that I could send you if you want. Yeah, please. I, I think I brought a lot of different stuff in. Sure. The, you can change. You got an option. Yeah, that's what you wish. Honestly, I didn't get it before, so. Yeah. That's the fun thing about it, you know. I mean, I, I stretch my goals to, to do everything. That's, that's my goal, is to bring in and this band is, is to sing every way human possible can sing. Mm -hmm. And have things come out of my, my mouth, you know. That's like from the pits of hell to, uh, to an angel. You know, and that's what I want to do. I want to do it. And that's, I think that's what's We had a thousand applicants. And we, yeah, yeah. One of the tapes, not in real life. I know. And um, I suppose you've all heard the story anyway. And we, um, it was a nightmare. Because you know you can only listen to about six vocalists, and they're all they're all good. Well, they're not all good. There's one guy with a blue, there's one guy with this blue sparkly face, and he kept he kept on his going, "Hey, let's get the show on the road." And all of us behind him was like a, a couple of speakers with an audience going wild. But we kept getting these videos all the time. We got a lot of women, we got a lot of Eskimos, we got a lot of South Americans, Russians, you name it. Um, so it was a nightmare, really, because you always thought. And then, you know, some are great singers with a very bad song. So you think, have we, have we missed the guy, you know? And, and for four years we went through hell. Jane cataloged them all and we, we eventually whittled it down. So they've had a short list of 20, which we were going to audition last March. And in February, Scott came over and played us this video. Ripper with um, uh, British Steel. And he, he just blew us away, you know. And we found him up there and then, and I, I didn't think it was him singing. I just, how many drum viewers that I have yeah. uh, <laughs> here? <laughs> and I said, I can't believe this guy, because the band was awful. But well, even I, I wasn't uh, totally convinced. The sound was awful, but this guy shone like a star. And uh, I, we found him up, and we asked him two questions, actually. But I'll only tell you one. <laughs> We said, me, I'm not going to tell you what the second question was. Uh, and he came over, and he, two days later, and he, he said, fly me over, he said, I was thinking, any priest on the wall. He came over, came in one Saturday morning, he jet lag, he done for, you know, and we said, look, get some sleep, and we'll tie out tomorrow and see. And he said, I'm going to sleep, wait to do an audition for Judas Priest. 
we really like that, so we put him out in the studio, put him like in the front of the room. the first line of Drifting the Chain. He's going like this, with headphones on, band in front of him, and I have to go, Whiskey Woman, don't you know that you are driving me insane? Stop the time. Stop the time. I'm serious, and I looked at Ken. And I knew, we fucking knew that, just that, <coughs> that said, can I finish the rest of the song? <laughs> we said, yeah, okay. And we let him sing the Ripper and he blew us away and we started calling the Ripper. But it was, it was like that. Now, I, in all my 20 years, I've never explained. I, I said this yesterday, we've never had any lock in this belt. We've never had any lock. We've made our own lock. In fact, we've had a lot of the back lock. But that was the biggest piece of lock we've ever had. At the time, we really needed it because, to be honest, and that weekend we got 20 guys that were all incredible singers, but in the, in the deep down inside... Yeah, we're still dreading the auditions, right? Yeah, there. there. No Americans here, but I love Americans anyway. <laughs> <laughs> LA, LA dudes, you know, with hair like this, uh, you knew that they'd come in a real nice guy and be a complete arsehole once you go from the gig, you know, and then, okay, you know, like you're, you're just a guitar player, but, and he fitted in so well, and that was the, that was the really amazing thing, you know, straight away, it's like he'd always been there, so it was a dream for us, come true and a dream for him. So honestly, Tim, when you get the phone call, do you believe it's then, or do you think it's a prank, or? Uh, you know, it's really strange. I honestly did. You know, I mean, it was, it was, uh, I don't know. I mean, it was, what's funny is I really didn't do anything. You know, I didn't send the tape out. I didn't do nothing. I didn't even see the tape. But for some reason, I got this call. And it was just, you know, well, first thing, they gave me a number for England and, and the name. So I kind of, oh, okay, that's oh, yeah. Any of my friends would be too stupid. Yeah, they would know England. That would be an elaborate prank, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I did. I, I, I honestly, you know, I, Heart stopped there for a second, then it started beating a little faster, and, and it was that was one of the that was probably the biggest moment. Actually, I can think of the whole thing. I was what's it feeling? That was probably the biggest, just the original phone call. Mm. It's an amazing story because we're not making Tim anything he's not. We're not pretending he's anything he's not. He's a guy that's sung in a proper band, but he's the best guy on this planet for the gig. I mean, visually. He can cut it on stage. I know that. We've seen him perform. He's got an amazing vocal range. He's seen the old free song better than ever. I'm telling you. And then we can we can move to the future. So it's like what uh, unbelievable. You know, we've had guys, name guys, you know, that, that applied for the job. But we've gone with this guy, and he's what he is. But he's now free singer, and uh, it's, it's a bit frightening, really. You know that he was there all the time, and we may have overlooked him. We may never have seen that painting. So, amazing. Oh, did you get all the video set? Was it for all fun? Scott. It's got both. Two girls going right. to, to Scott. Mm -hmm. We still are on the favourite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a long time ago. They you are know, great guys, and, and it was a good good band. And, uh, you know, honestly, one for one is band, I wouldn't be here because that's why we did the Judas Brick. Because uh, we couldn't play in with an original band, couldn't make any money, couldn't get any shows. So the promoter who was trying to get through the band said, hey, why don't you do a Judas Priest tribute band? You know, you heard the first group sing. I told him, no, I don't think he had. And couldn't get any shows, so I said, oh, I can do it. So was it the Winters Burn lineup or did the Judas Priest tribute? Was it just yourself or? Uh, it was it was the original lineup, but the tape that was because I eventually quit Winters Burn and was just doing that. Right. Down the road, and, uh, whole different band, you know. That that's the reason why I got out of of the British Steel band, and I I quit the the tape that we videotaped. It was my very last show that I did with British Steel, so it's kind of ironic. It was a year later when I got the call. I quit because it just wasn't, you know, we're changing band members all the time and trying to get it. It just was like, you know, you can't get up there and, and do a Jewish priest and not sound like it. And I was the only one that was. So, <laughs> you know, it was, it was a, a lot of pressure to go up every night and be the only one that's singing the part. Right? It sounds yeah. more like us than we do. <laughs> we always think it to be in a band that, you know, <laughs> you know, me. Was she trying to get Judas Priest lookalikes and just cover on like KK and no, Glennon you know, and all the others? Yeah. Uh, 
couldn't get anybody to good looking. Guys. <laughs> Make a note of that. <laughs> Well, we feel it's important, you know. Um, there'll, there'll never be another singer. I mean, Tim's there for life, and that's it. And um, we've we've always felt it's important to stick together. I mean, me and Ken we clash, you know. We have gone through the years, but we know deep. It's only it's like really gives that spark of intensity to the band, you know. We don't so much now what we did in the early days, and that. You, you, you learn eventually that, yeah, that's okay, you can do that, but the most important thing is Jewish truth. And it is the most important thing. You know. If you get so many lineup changes in a band, it's no longer the band, really. We've had a, a, a lot of drummers, you know, in our time. And Scott's, if you can see the fact, I know Scott played with Fife for a while, but it's fine with us, because we, we weren't going to continue, and we'd always sort of seen the priest fires up again. The drumming position's yours. So Scott's been with us now for 10 years now. And me, Ken and Ian were all on the first album, so there's, a, there's only 10 there. I, mean, I can't <laughs> see there ever being any more line of change. In fact, I think if there were any more line of change, we would call it a day, you know. You're going to see a slave too, you know, or a, you know what I mean, or a, like <laughs> Sabbath, who really, well, Sabbath one of my favourite bands, but I don't quite regard them as much as I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. No disrespect, you know. Oh. I think I always a great guitar player and songwriter. You all know about Ozzy, you know. So what, what did you think about uh, Rob going with uh, Sabbath for that reunion concert? Oh. Where to sing him because like Dio wouldn't sing? What was your... Um, what what do you, do you think, think about it? Yeah. <laughs> it's very difficult for me to put that in words, particularly as he announced <laughs> at that concert that he was going to rejoin Priest, which was news to us. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Somebody told us he, uh, in, in, in the fight, in the fight show that he, that he was playing Black Sabbath songs, which is yeah, really he was. Yes, he was. Hadn't yeah. he been Judas Priest and pl played? Well, I mean, how can he? And that, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Really, you know. It's all part weird. of what I said earlier on that Rob was very confused and probably I don't know, still is, still is, <laughs> and he music, musically is searching for something. But you know, we knew that he's. I think he'd lost his love for Priest in the last two tours and he was just on stage for the box if you like. I can't see any other reason. And it affects your performance and the kids aren't that, the fans of that. They detect it as well, you know. And I, although I think the last two tours we've performed better than ever, there's that thing inside that you think is not quite genuine, whereas it is now. And I think that's all related to Rob trying himself out with Sabbath and pursuing the Pantera style and now industrial, you know. And, and again, I honestly mean it, good luck to him, because I think you have to do what you want to do in life. But that was no good to us, because what we really wanted was a unity and a, and a, and a, a belief that what we're doing is the best thing we can possibly do, you know. Um, and I just think he lost his way, but he, he wouldn't say that. He'd say... You know, he knows what he's doing and he's enjoying himself. And he, and he <coughs> so, but you know, that, that was why we, it was inevitable we part company at that point in time. He wanted to do his own thing and good luck to him. Yeah. Very, you know, Shocked. very much. If you imagine what we've done and worked for for 20 years, and it's literally all down the drain, you know. That's what we felt at the time. And, uh, you hear lots of things, you know, that people say our last tour wasn't successful. It was successful. In fact, we toured twice in the same year in the States, and most bands were cancelled halfway through the first tour, you know. Everything slumped about that time, musical trends changed, but we still did two tours in the same year and played better than ever. So, in a sense, the band was, was, was doing well. It was just the, the climate, you know, the musical climate was a bit weird. Um, but as I say now, I look back on it and I'm glad it's all happened. I'm really so glad, you know. We've got fresh blood and energy and it's, it's, it's just a great feeling. Sometimes we used to dread performing or, or, or rehearsing, you know. It's like, because you know, you know when you know everybody's not totally into it? Well, that's what, you know, whether you understand that, but now it's just, 
And we're all fell into it, so can't wait. Would you propose in the future on the live show uh, the same old things with the with the motorbike and uh, all the? Uh, you have to wait and see. You have to buy a ticket and come and see. <laughs> well, I always say is it, when you you're not to be disappointed. It will be Judas Priest. Yeah. And so you you will see the Judas Priest show, which is what the kids want to see. Um, we've got some surprises in store. Let me tell you. I think it'll be a big production because again, Priest will always be larger than life, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you intend to take the opportunity to take uh, young metal bands out with you, give them a break? Yeah. Yes, yeah, we've yeah, always you know, you've got names when you get to the wedding. Yeah, we've got yeah. a list and, and this is one thing we've always done, you know, that. Um, we, we've always chosen the supporter, not just because they're going to put bombs on seats. Right. Because we like them and we can help put them on a platform to, you know, we, we've always been that way. People always say, oh, you know, come and have the burning babies, you know, because they'll, they'll sell a lot of seats and we go, no, we'd rather have so-and-so because we like them. Oh. And, uh, and, yeah. and we think that uh, they'll be compatible with, with, our, with our typical funds, you know, metal funds. It's no, it's no good getting a cross-section in there, is it? No, you get like record companies, they, they, different, they get together and they try and push this band because the band wants it too, they've just done an album, but you know, okay, they might sell, but if you're on a mixture of fans, you know, no. you know, you know, you know Judas Priest and Snow White on the same bill, you know. There isn't a band called Snow White, is there? Oh. There is. <laughs> See, you can't say anything, can you? You can't say anything. There's a band called Snow White. There's a Zeno White from Chicago. Jesus, okay. Yeah, Zeno White, yeah.